welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The Forgotten Ladies that sent Mary Queen of Scots to her execution. One of the most shocking executions of the Tudor period saw an anointed queen lay her head on the block whilst the executioner blundered her execution with his axe. Mary Queen of Scots lived a rather troubled last few decades of her life, in which her marriages led to her downfall as the Queen of Scotland, but also as she became a prisoner of her cousin Elizabeth I. To flee Scotland, she arrived in England, and was then held under house arrest for almost two decades, and during this time she agreed to take part in a number of plots. These were treasonous, and Catholics across England wanted the Protestant Elizabeth off the throne, and the Catholic Mary, who did have a claim to the throne, placed on it. The Babington plot was the final nail in Mary's coffin, as Elizabeth I, under pressure from her Privy Council, would place Mary on trial and then sentence her to death. However, Elizabeth was apprehensive to order her execution, but on the morning of the 8th of February 1587, inside a Fothering Hay Castle, Mary Queen of Scots lost her life. But accompanying Mary to her execution were two women, her servants, Jane Kennedy and Elizabeth Curl. But who were the forgotten ladies that sent Mary Queen of Scots to her execution? Inside of Fothering Hay Castle's Great Hall, Mary Queen of Scots would be executed in brutal fashion. Her final moments were described as Mary's prayers being ended. The executioners, kneeling, desired her grace to forgive them her death who answered, I forgive you with all my heart, for now I hope you shall make an end of all my troubles. Then they, with her two women helping her up, began to disrobe her of her apparel. Then she laying her crucifix upon the stool, one of the executioners took from her neck the Agnes Day, which she, laying hands off it, gave to one of her women, and told the executioner he should be answered money for it. Then she suffered them, with her two women, to disrobe her of her chain of pomander beads and other of her apparel most willingly, and with joy rather than sorrow helped to make unready herself, putting on a pair of sleeves with her own hands, which they had pulled off, and that with some haste, as if she had longed to be gone. All this time they were pulling off her apparel, she never changed her countenance, but with smiling cheer she uttered these words, that she never had such grooms to make her unready, and that she never put off her clothes before such a company. Then she, being stripped of all her apparel, saving her petticoat and kirtle, her two women beholding her, made great lamentation, and crying and crossing themselves prayed in Latin. She turned herself to them, embracing them, said these words in French, Ni cri vous je pom pour vous, and so crossing and kissing them, bade them pray for her, and rejoice and not weep, for that now they should see an end of all their mistress's troubles. Then she, with a smiling countenance, turning to her men-servants, as Melvin and the rest, standing upon a bench nigh in the scaffold, was sometimes weeping, sometimes crying out loud, and continually crossing themselves, prayed in Latin, crossing them with her hands bade them farewell, and wishing them to pray for her, even until the last hour. This done, one of the women, having a Corpus Christi cloth lapped up three corner ways, kissing it, put it over the Queen of Scots' face and pinned it fast to the cool of her head. Then two of women departed from her, and she kneeling down upon the cushion most restlessly, and without any taken or fear of death, she spake aloud this psalm in Latin, Indi dom confido, non conforda, in aeternum, etc. Then, Groping for the back, she laid down her head, putting her chin over the block with both her hands, which, holding there still, had been cut off, had they not been espied. Then lying upon the block most quietly, and stretching out her arms, cried, In manus tuus, Dominique, etc., three or four times. Then she, lying very still upon the block, one of the executioners holding her slightly with one of his hands, she endured two strokes of the other executioner with an axe, she making very small noise or none at all, and not stirring any part of her from the place where she lay, and so the executioner cut off her head, saving one little gristle, which being cut asunder, he lift up her head to the view of all the assembly, 
and bade God save the Queen. Then, her dress of lawn falling from off her head, it appeared as grey as one of the threescore and ten-year-old, pulled very short, her face in a moment being so much altered from the form she had when she was alive, as few could remember her by her dead face. Her lips stirred up and down a quarter of an hour after her head was cut off. Then, Mr. Dean said with a loud voice, So perish all the Queen's enemies, and afterwards the Earl of Kent came to the dead body, and standing over it with a loud voice said, Such end of all the Queen's and the Gospel's enemies. Then one of the executioners, pulling off her garters, espied her little dog which was crept under her clothes which could not be gotten forth by force, yet afterwards would not depart from the dead corpse, but came and lay between her head and her shoulders, which being imbrued with her blood was carried away and washed. As all things else were that had any blood was either burned or washed clean, and the executioners sent away with money for their fees, not having any one thing that belonged unto her. And so, every man being commanded out of the hall, except the sheriff and his men, she was carried by them up into the great chamber, lying ready for the surgeons to embalm her. But as mentioned, it was said that she was accompanied by two women on the scaffold, but these women's stories have been relatively lost to time. One of these women was Jane Kennedy, who was a close companion of Mary Queen of Scots during her captivity, Jane was, it's possible, the daughter of the third Earl of Cassillis, and she had waited on Mary for a long time, ever since she signed abdication papers. It was said that she even may have jumped from a window to practice the Queen's escape, or that she jumped from a window to join the Queen, as she fled her island where she was imprisoned at Lochleven Castle. When she came to England, Jane was listed as being a maid at Tutbury Castle, and she continued to serve Mary in the many different castles she was held in. At Sheffield, she was described as a maid of the chamber, and William Cecil would later write that he suspected that a servant was forming a romantic relationship with Jane, the Scottish Queen's woman. It's believed that Jane was very close to Mary, and she was a true friend to her. The English were concerned about the relationship Jane was having with this young man, and he was banned from speaking to her as the English sought to control every part of Mary's imprisonment. In 1586, Jane was described as a gentlewoman of the Queen's chamber, who was also responsible for the Queen's jewels. This shows how well respected Jane was, and how she was incredibly close to the former Scottish monarch. She was trusted to keep Mary's jewels safe, and an inventory of them was made. But at Fotheringhay Castle, the final place where Mary would be held before she was executed in the Great Hall there, Jane Kennedy would remain with her. Jane helped her remove her outer garments on the scaffold, and she helped Mary to disrobe and prepare for her final moments. It was Jane Kennedy who was the one who provided a blindfold for the Queen, and tied a white veil embroidered in gold around her eyes, before she knelt at the block and stretched out her arms. But who was the other woman who accompanied Mary to the scaffold? Described as another servant was Elizabeth Curl, who was the sister of Gilbert Curl, who was a Scottish secretary who served Mary Queen of Scots during her captivity. Gilbert would, with his sister, get close to the Queen, and he was considered a well-liked member of the Queen's entourage. He would be taken to different places to assess them, to see if they were suitable for Mary's imprisonment and moving, and he even got married at Tutbury Castle, where Mary was being imprisoned. But his sister Elizabeth also remained close to the Queen, and she was also, it's assumed, a woman of the Privy Chamber, or of the Bedchamber. She would have helped to dress the Queen daily, and especially on the day of her execution. She would have helped the Queen decide on her final outfit, but Elizabeth Curl was also considered someone who was given gifts from the Queen. She had several lengths of silk, linen, and other items gifted to her. During the execution, she also helped Jane Kennedy to remove her other garments and to prepare for her final moments. She did not tie a blindfold, but wept greatly like Jane Kennedy, and she saw Mary being hacked to pieces by the executioner. However, what is interesting is that following Mary's execution, an inventory was made of her jewels, and many items were listed as being in the custody of Elizabeth Curl. This included a chain of coral and gold musk, or, and commander beads with pearls, and a chain of small pearls, 
She also had possessions of a gold book and the portraits of Mary Darnley and James V, along with a gold ring set with a ruby, a diamond ring, a ring of mother pearl set with a blue sapphire, a gold enamelled spear, a gold tree with a queen on top and a boy pulling the branches, and twelve billets in an ivory ball. With this it shows us that following her death, Elizabeth maintained custody of the Queen's valuables and jewellery, and presumably now owned these. She was given instructions to pass on certain items following her death, and she had custody of Mary's chaser plate and more silver items. She also had 200 French crowns for one of her sisters, and many items from the Queen's wardrobe, including a silk gown, a black petticoat edged with sheepskin, and many more items. There are many paintings that show Mary Queen of Scots in her final moments at Fotheringhay, as the executioner stands in the background armed with his axe, but present also were two women, and we now know that these are Elizabeth Curl and Jane Kennedy, who were incredibly loyal to the former Scottish monarch. What is shocking is that Mary's execution dealt with the threat she posed to Elizabeth forever. However, the English Queen, it's believed, did regret signing her death warrant, and this caused a significant amount of upset for the English Queen, as she was now also seen as a Queen killer. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.